So today I'm gonna to show you some of the things that I'm growing in my garden that are gonna be able to survive this summer heat. Some of the things that I'm growing are going to ripen and get ready and be harvested before the real heat of late May and June sets in. Other things are just gonna settle in and keep on growing through the summer. So I'm gonna walk you through my garden, tell you about the different plants, give you some tips for growing all of those plants, and basically take some of the fear out of gardening during the summer in Arizona. I've tried to grow corn a couple of different times, always unsuccessfully, and I never devoted enough room to it or planted it at quite the right time. So I really am trying to be successful this year growing corn. So we'll see. We've got a full bed devoted to corn, giving it plenty of water. I added some blood meal the other day. I will keep you posted. So because corn doesn't climb, and there's gonna be a trellis here. I don't wanna waste the trellis. So I also planted some Malabar spinach here at the end of the bed, and it loves to climb. The heat-loving spinach, not a true spinach, and it just tolerates our heat like a champ. It does really, really well. I'm also growing tomatillos this year. So the one tip for tomatillos is make sure you always plant two. They need a friend to help pollinate if you've planted tomatillos and thought, I didn't get any fruit may be the reason. Tomatillos love to sprawl and climb, so they're on the end where I'm gonna put the trellis. So they're gonna climb, climb up that trellis. They don't seem to mind the heat too much. They just, they just keep going and pumping out fruit. Another heat-loving vegetable is sweet potatoes. Dedicated almost all of this bed to sweet potatoes. I started those indoors, grew slips, and then planted the slips in each of these squares. Some of them kind of looked like they were dying back, but almost all of them came back from the dead. If you've planted sweet potato slips and they look like they're dying, be patient, because those roots are probably alive. They're just suffering a little bit of transplant shock. Sweet potatoes will grow in this bed all summer, into the fall, into late fall. We will harvest the sweet potatoes probably around November, just in time for Thanksgiving. All along the end of this bed, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four roselle plants. We had two plants last year, and it wasn't quite enough to keep us and all our friends in roselle jam. And to make, and really unusual, but delicious to flavor. Looking forward to the roselle harvest. Roselle is beautiful, it takes a lot of room, so it does not mind Arizona heat. One thing you'll see a lot of throughout my garden is sunflowers. Many of those have just receded and come back on their own year after year. Others, I tuck seeds in here and there. I like to use sunflowers for shade, for vining vegetables, lots of things. And if I decide that I really don't want a sunflower right there, then I'll just pull it. But sunflowers add so much to the garden. They make it bright and cheery. So you can see this vining squash is making its way up the ladder. To help it out sometimes. I'm trying out three different tomatoes this year. This is a San Marzano and a Stupus. Not stupid, kind of looks like stupid, but hopefully it's not a stupid tomato. Stupus and back in there if you can see a pink boar tomato. Just to see how they do, I've got you know, a bunch of celebrities and Roma's growing, but I'm gonna give these three a try and see if we like them. It's always fun to have a little bit of variety. So this squash bed back here takes a little bit longer to get going because it gets a lot of shade, which at the beginning of the season isn't a good thing, but as it heats up, it is a good thing. These plants aren't as big yet as the other ones, but they'll catch up. Tucked in here, you can see this Lysianthus. I actually planted this from a transplant last year. It bloomed really well. I got a lot of beautiful blooms on it and it kept going and then it kind of died back. So I just, I cut it back at the base and then a new one has kind of gone, gone up in its place. And that happened everywhere that I had Lysianthus planted. We didn't have a really cold winter this year and maybe that's why. So maybe next year we won't be so lucky. So also in this bed, mixed in with the squash and all the flowers and sunflowers, I am growing leeks. So I planted these back in January. There's a lot of them. So we're gonna see, this is my first time growing leeks. 
They go down quite deep. I'm hoping that they thicken up and we shall see. Here's a zucchini rapicante. Sure, I am butchering that name, so sorry. Climbing up this big ladder here. Going up the front of the ladder, on this side, I have a table queen acorn squash. Kind of going up and you can see there's a couple ones going up. I'm almost embarrassed to show you this bed. This is squash and I planted one per square, but they have been super happy here. And I think we're gonna be okay. These plants are getting pretty big. Luckily, a couple of them are gonna vine right up that ladder. I cut these peppers back in late February and they are coming back. I pinched off the blossoms for a little while, but now I'm gonna just leave them and let them go. Got lots of different varieties. I'm excited to see some of these zinnias. I always pinch the young zinnia seedlings back. They'll branch and get really bushy. So one zinnia becomes lots of zinnias. So the turmeric is beginning. different varieties of basil tucked in and around my garden. Makes a great companion plant and I love basil. Just again keep it pinched. I can see this one's ready here to pinch. I'm going to pinch right above where it has two leaves. Again that's going to encourage it to branch out and grow and be a nice full basil plant. Here's another baby spaghetti squash. Just kind of getting going over here in the new garden area. Lots more Itoy onions. I'll be harvesting these the end of, by the end of the month. They'll be harvested and you can store them and eat them and I always store them and share them and there's always plenty to plant. Somehow there's always enough to share. Here's another one of the, this one is the new Hanover ground cherry. And see those little gooseberries forming. I'm so excited. Sadly, many things like sweet peas will be finishing up in the garden. Did a big harvest of sweet peas, but I am certainly sad to see these guys go. I'm gonna let them hang on a little bit longer. I won't be planting anything else in this container this summer, but I'll drag it out again, plant something in it next fall. If you peek behind me, you can see it's that time of month at growing in the garden. I bust out the letter boards and show you what to plant in your garden this month. Some months there are so many choices and so many things to plant, but as May and June come along, those are the months that there are probably less things to plant, but there are still plenty of things that you can plant. Don't despair. If you need to get your hands dirty and you haven't quite planted yet, there are still plenty of things that you can plant. Don't worry about trying to write this down. Just head to my blog and there is a blog post about each month of the year in Arizona. Most of these vegetables here have articles about how to grow them. I'm learning how to grow new things. I'm learning about things that grow well here and I'm adding them to the board. So stay tuned, keep an eye on those blog posts and on the Instagram posts and on my videos. I'm gonna keep you updated with what I'm learning and teach you how you can be successful growing your own garden, even during the summer here in Arizona. Here's a list of all the flowers that you can plant in May. There are several flowers that really thrive in Arizona during the summer. So if you're wondering whether to start from seeds or transplant, head to my blog and there's a planting guide and under each flower, it'll tell you the best way to start. If it does best started from seed, or from transplants. Don't be afraid to add a flower or two into your vegetable garden. The pollinators love it and it looks beautiful and they often reseed and come back year after year and that makes your job a lot easier.
of the things I'm growing in my Arizona garden this summer. Next week, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to make sure that my garden has the best chance for success during the summer. There are several things you can do to help out your garden, and next week's video is all about getting the garden ready for those triple digit temperatures. Thank you so much for watching.